Welcome to the wood shop stop. Today we're going to build a hallway bench made from pallet wood. I start out by milling the lumber. These are uh, considerably larger boards than I normally get with pallet wood. Uh, some of these are the runners and uh, various uh, base pieces from the pallets and the skids that I get. But, uh, we're just kind of flattening these surfaces here and now we're going to run them on a table saw and uh, clean off uh, the excess this bench is going to be uh, about 50 inches long and 70 or not 70 but 17 inches deep and have a height of about 20 inches tall here are the main pieces that I decided to use for the uh, the bench and you can see some of these were rough sawn so we're just uh, cleaning these up and getting them all the same size and now we're going to trim off the uh, or square up the one edge opposite of what we ran on the uh, jointer so we've got a, a square board. Here I'm marking uh, the legs out on these boards. I'm basically going to split these down the center and uh, on the uh, miter saw. And I'm just marking the center of these uh, two boards for that. Now I'm figuring out the uh, joint. This is for the uh, the long skirt. So this is what I'll uh, achieve my 50 inches with and then there's going to be another dimension for the uh, side skirt which is uh, roughly about uh, 10 inches uh, minus the uh, tenons on the end. And you saw I centered out the uh, location of the board and now I'm drilling uh, with the Forstner bit. Uh, inch and an eighth deep for the uh, mortise. I'll drill on this edge and then I'll drill on the face. So I'll have a mortise on the edge and then a mortise on the face of this on each leg. Here's the second cut. Uh, this is actually in the face and it's uh, off center. So this one is not in the center of the board uh, because of the uh, previous mortise. I didn't want to run into that one so I had to offset that second mortise. And you saw all the legs there with the mortises cut. And now I'm measuring for the uh, side skirt or rail. And uh, here's the Here's the board with the uh, tenon drawn on it as well. And this is the long skirt. And I've got the mortise marked out on the end there. So I can cut that out. Now for the side pieces, I decided to use my tenon jig on the table saw. And uh, this worked out real well. But for the, uh, the longer pieces, uh, I had to do by hand. As you see here, I've got the uh, Japanese pull saw, which uh, cuts really good. I like to create a valley with the uh, chisel first so that the uh, 
saw will kind of sit in that little cradle and uh, gives gives me a better cut. And I don't uh, affect that mortise by a miscut. So. Now here I'm trimming off the excess, trying not to uh, cut into the cheeks of that uh, tenon. Actually it wasn't that bad uh, cutting those by hand. Just a little more time. Now I need to put a radius on the uh, tenon. So I'll use this one inch dowel and then mark out the radius on the ends of that tenon so that they'll fit into the mortise. Uh, I'd rather not uh, square up the mortise. I'd rather just put a radius on the uh, tenon. And you can see I'm marking the areas for the uh, waist. The dowel worked out very well because the uh, Forstner bit was the one inch. These are one inch wide tenons. So I used the one inch Forstner bit and then the one inch dowel works good for the radius. Then all that's left to do is trim out uh, the uh, darkened area and I'll have my radius. Then I check it to make sure it's square. As square as possible anyway with a chisel. And after that I use the uh, rasp to uh, Put a little chamfer or, or radius edge on the end of the uh, tenon so that it will uh, go into the uh, mortise easier. And here you see the uh, pieces all connected. Now I'm going to make the base. Actually this is the uh, support runner that goes on the bottom. It will be connected to the legs. And I'll just cut out a uh, dado. To slip that uh, long piece into, glue it, clamp it. I'm using the cross cut sled here to cut out these dados. Uh, I know it would have been easier with the uh, dado blade, but I, I guess I was lazy and didn't didn't want to pull it out and change blades. Now I'm gluing up the pieces. It's got a really good fit on that dado. So that should glue up very well. I actually put two clamps on the, on the ends of those. 
Now I'm drilling out the uh, 3 8 dowel holes into the legs. As you can see I have it marked up for the uh, support. I just did the outline of the uh, support pieces where I wanted them and then uh, found a location for the dowels and I'm drilling them out. And then I use the impression plugs to uh, leave a mark on the uh, ends of the uh, support pieces and then I can drill those out as well. And they match up very well. I was very pleased with the alignment and the uh, fitting of the joint using this uh, doweling jig and those impression plugs. As you can see here, it, uh, it uh, went together pretty good. I'm doing a dry fit here and uh, putting all the pieces together before I glue it up to make sure that it's going to fit together well. And uh, looks like we have success. Now after I finish this, I'll be able to start the glue up. As you can see here, it looks pretty good. It's uh, pretty solid. There's no rock in it, so it's nice and level. And I should be able to square everything up when I glue it together and clamp it. And here I've started the glue up. I'm gluing in the dowels first. These are for the uh, support piece on the bottom. doing this in halves this is uh, one half and uh, so I'll glue up this uh, skirt to the leg and I'll do the same on the opposite end I'll put in the uh, side skirt and now the opposite end Put glue on the face and the mortise or on the tenon and on the face and cheeks of the tenon. Now it's time to add the support piece. I've uh, put glue on the uh, dowels on the one leg and on the face. That went together pretty good. Now I'll put glue in the holes for the dowel on both ends, apply the dowels, tap them so they bottom out. And now I can glue up the other half of the uh, bench, this uh, skirt and legs here. And I'll attach the second half, as you see. 
and tap it into place. Clean up the excess squeeze out. I'll be doing that again once I put the clamps on. Here I've got the clamps started. Clamp in all directions and uh, of course the clamps caused more squeeze out so there was more cleanup to do. But everything looks good. The joints are, not, are nice and tight. Now this is the top of the bench. Uh, I cut these pieces off camera. There's actually 14 pieces that will go on the top. I milled them. Uh, they're just under uh, an inch and a half thickness. Now I'm putting a, a chamfer on each side. So when they butt up together on the top of the bench, it'll be like a groove between the two of them between the boards and uh, now I'm gluing them up probably could have used a little more glue on that board there gluing them and uh, pin nailing I may uh, decide to put screws in later on but I'll put I'll just use the pin nails for now the glue and pin nails may be enough. I'm not sure if I want to go with screws. And I also thought about uh, drilling and uh, applying dowels for each runner. And there they are with all the uh, runners on top. And here I'm starting to clamp up uh, the runners. Everything's all glued up and finished, and uh, we're putting a chamfer on the uh, on the top of the seat of the bench. And it's ready for sanding. I start off with a 80 grit sandpaper and uh, then I switch to uh, 150 and then I use some 220 and uh, that's about all I did. In fact I didn't use uh, 220 on the, the leg and base part of it very much just on the top just to kind of make that a little bit smoother. Here I'm uh, putting a chamfer or a bevel on the uh, bottom of the legs. And here's the finished piece. All ready for uh, finish actually. I decided I'm going to go with a uh, tongue oil for a finish and uh, see how that looks, see how I like it. It shouldn't change uh, the uh, color that much. It'll darken it some, but uh, you'll still be able to see the, the grain. Here's, here's the finish going on. I wiped it down first to remove all the dust, and then now I'm applying the tongue oil. As you can see, the, the change in the color it's, uh, really brings out the grain in that uh, pine. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification for future videos. Thank you.